Welcome to your holiday on the Caledonian Canal, surely one of the world's most beautiful inland waterways. Your trip through the Great Glen will take you through one of the most memorable and enjoyable experiences you will ever have. The beautiful scenery, the fascinating history, and the friendly locals will see to that. Our cruising area is slightly different to other inland waterways. You will be travelling through Loch Ness and Loch Lochy. These are large areas of open water, just like being at sea. Therefore, there are important items of safety you must know about prior to travelling out on them. Our locks are also different to those in other areas. Considerably bigger, but they are operated by friendly and helpful lock keepers who will assist you. But you do still need to know the correct procedure. To help you along the way, you will have a navigation map and boat manual on board. Read these before you set off. Should you need to contact the boatyard for any reason during your holiday, contact details are in the boat manual. The 60 mile journey from Inverness to Fort William takes approximately three days. Therefore, during a week's cruise, you should be able to manage the full return trip. From Easter to the end of October, the canal is open seven days a week. Appoint a skipper. He or she has overall responsibility. Your boat handover instructor will guide you through all safety and operational training. Before leaving the boatyard, make sure everyone on board is wearing a correctly fitted life jacket and is wearing sensible shoes. Also check personal equipment, buoyancy aids, locations of emergency equipment including fire extinguishers and fire blanket. Your handover instructor will go over the navigation map and boat manual. When you pull off, make sure the ropes are gathered up quickly. You don't want to leave them trailing over the side. It could get caught around the propeller and cause your engine to cut out. Travelling through this section of canals, we will pass through a lock, a bridge and then on to Loch Oich. The forecast is fine and we've got plenty of daylight, so we're going to make our overnight stop at the Well of Seven Heads in Loch Oich. As you approach the lock, look out for the lock keeper. If you do not see him, moor up at the nearest pontoon and go and look for him. He's never far away. The lock keeper will indicate which side of the chamber he wants you to use. Make sure your crew are ready and wearing their buoyancy aids. One crew member on the bow, with the rope neatly coiled and passed under the rail, and one crew member at the stern, that's the back of the boat. Approach slowly and watch out for any problems. When entering the lock, throw or pass the line to him. He will then pass it around a cleat or a bollard and then pass it back to you. When you have the rope back, hold on to it tightly. It's a good idea to wear gloves when handling ropes and always pay attention to what's going on. Stop the boat's engine and leave the boat in neutral when you have the ropes ashore. When all the boats are locked into the chamber, the lock keeper will close the gates and open the sluices. This will then flood water into or out of the lock, depending on if you are going uphill or downhill. So hold on to the rope firmly. Before moving off, make sure both lines are back on board. Push off the bow from the side of the lock. Once through the lock, Tidy up the ropes and make sure they are neatly coiled and ready for the next time you need to use them. Always make sure there is no way the ropes can fall over the sides. At Fort Augustus there are five locks. Here the crew will have to pull the boat through by hand. Don't worry, it's not as bad as it sounds. You will find the lock keepers very helpful and obliging and they will always do their best to assist you along the way. The banks of the Caledonian Canal are rocky, so don't get too close to them. Stay about a boat width away. Steer to the right if passing another boat. You will pass port to port. That's your left side to their left side. We don't want to go too fast either. The wash created from the boat will erode the canal banks, 
so stick to the speed limit of 6 miles an hour. All the bridges along the way are manned by bridge keepers. They will indicate to you if they want you to move forward or to wait. If a vessel is approaching from the opposite direction, you may be asked to hang on for a few minutes. There is always the chance of a jetty if you have to wait for any length of time. As you approach, you will hear the bridge alarm sounding. This means the traffic is being stopped. Don't get any closer than 100 meters. Never try and go under a bridge unless advised by the bridge keeper. When you see the bridge opening, approach slowly. Do not attempt to go through the bridge until you see it is fully opened. On the canals and lochs, the deep water channels are marked by green and red marker buoys. These mark the shallow areas, so you must pay attention to them. When travelling from east to west, pass the green buoys to port, that's to the left side of your boat, and the red buoys to starboard, that's to the right side of your boat. When travelling west to east, that's the opposite way. There are three areas in the glen where you need to pay particular attention, and these are the channel entrance to Urquhart Bay Harbour, the canal entrance to Fort Augustus, and the Boyd Channel through Loch Oich. Please refer to the handbook for additional information regarding these areas. Before setting off, make sure the weather conditions are suitable for you. Both Loch Ness and Loch Lochy are big areas of open water and can be quite rough. If there is any sign of fog, don't venture out. It rarely lasts long and it's usually gone by mid-morning. Good weather advice can be obtained from the boatyard and the lock keepers are very knowledgeable about the conditions experienced in the glen. Much of your time along the canal, you will tie up at pontoons like these. These are located throughout the canal system. Never jump ashore when berthing. Wait until the boat is close enough to the pontoon and the skipper has put the boat in neutral. Then step ashore. Remember, if you fall in the water, you could get crushed by the boat or even fall into the moving propeller. Tie the boat up like this, bring the rope from the boat, put it around and over the cleat in a figure of eight, and finish it off with a half hitch. Tidy up the ropes. Make sure they are neatly coiled for the next time you need to use them. Always be careful when using ropes. Never wrap a rope around your hand. It could cause a nasty injury or a burn. When berthing at a pontoon, put a line ashore at the bow and one at the stern. Any jetties or pontoons that are private are clearly marked. Some are reserved for large commercial vehicles which operate in the canal. Please pay attention to these signs. During your cruise, it is unlikely you will have to use any of the safety equipment on board. If, however, your engine does cut out, the first thing to do is to phone the boatyard so they know you have a problem, using the phone number in your handbook. You should then put out your drift anchor. This acts like a parachute and puts the boat into a controlled drift. The proper way to use it is to tie it to a bow line. If the weather conditions are rough, proceed with caution. When the drift anchor is in place, your boat will go into the wind and won't roll around in the waves so much. Now you are in a controlled drift. If you begin to drift inshore, you will need to use your main anchor to prevent your vessel from grounding. This is dropped over the bow, so you must be careful when deploying it. Pull the full length of the anchor from the locker and lay carefully on the deck. Secure the rope to the bow cleat, remove the anchor from its storage location, pick it up, and drop it underneath the handrail and over the bow of the boat. And immediately step away, keeping clear of the chain. It is possible to seriously injure yourself when deploying an anchor, so you must be extremely careful at all times. So we hope you find all the information and tips in this video useful. The chances of you having to use any of the safety features are remote. It is important, however, that you are aware of the safety regulations and equipment. More can be found in the boat's handbook. 
We hope you have a lovely time on the Caledonian Canal.